Hey, folks, looks like we're going to talk a little bit about the ever-expanding MonsterVerse. I am the man you may know as E from Our Reviews Will Kill You, and I am joined by Gigablast02. Welcome, my friend. Hey, how's it going, my friend? We're doing good. We're going to do, we're going to talk a little Godzilla MonsterVerse. We're going to start crossing over, doing some good stuff. You got some two big-time Godzilla fans here. Very much. I've, I've been a Godzilla fan ever since I was honestly born. That's, like, I mean, it was like right out the door. Godzilla is my thing I need to get to. <laughs> you were born, and then Godzilla slapped you right on the booty, and then you came out, and you're like, all right, let's go. So yep, that's as exactly how it went down. I mean, this is like one of the biggest years for Godzilla that I can even think of. It's like a this magical resurgence. When you get Godzilla minus one, and then you get uh, Godzilla... X Kong, and that's it's pretty wild to get two Godzilla movies in one like one span of a year. Yeah, it's crazy, it's especially the fact that they're complete polar opposites of each other. So honestly, both of the MonsterVerse, uh, we're both fans of Godzilla, are going to get their cup of tea. They're either going to enjoy the minus one, or they're going to enjoy the uh, Godzilla X Kong. Yeah, that's exactly. Uh, Critical Drinker just released a video where he was reviewing Godzilla X Kong, and he was saying similar things where. You know, it, it, you, you're going to get what you want out of it. If you want monster slam in action, go with G- Godzilla X Kong. But if you want, you know, more serious, reflective, you know, thing on on like the the state of Japan post World War II, <laughs> then you go with Godzilla minus one. So it's really, uh, but I think that's what's beautiful about the franchise. You know, we've got thirty plus movies, and they're all over the place. You know. From yeah, you know Shin Godzilla, which is like body horror, to you know uh, Godzilla versus Megalon, which is like the height of the Showa era, just insanity. <laughs> you know where you hey, have- you have to you you have to get the Godzilla drop kick, man. Like, got- like if the monster versus doesn't do that at some point with this Godzilla, I'm going to be very disappointed. Yeah, I, and that's that's what the weird part is. Like, where does it go? I mean, I'm not the world's biggest fan of the legendary Godzilla universe. Uh, I'm kind of like some movies. I think I like them in hindsight when I saw some of them, I wasn't super excited. You know, I always make fun of uh, the 2014 Gareth Edwards Godzilla because I feel like we got sold a bill of goods with uh, Brian Cranston for Breaking Bad and, we, did, you know, it was like a bait and switch. Like I wanted more Brian Cranston, yep. like the best human to ever exist inside of a Godzilla franchise, and then you take him away from me. How dare you! Uh, Not only that, but like you could tell he was definitely the actor that sold his role the most because everybody else had this like very non-expressive face about them, unless it was scared or didn't know what to do. I mean, that was the emotion that carried the entire film, and it was just like. Okay, any different pace, but then luckily we had Doctor Shirazawa with his epic line, "Let them fight." <laughs> Let them fight. Yes, Let I'm actually fight. sad that he hasn't been able to continue his. He didn't get to carry his role over. But what are you going to do? That is unfortunate. I think the I think the big part is, and this is where we're going to get to is is it seems like the MonsterVerse never really found its footing as to whether or not it was going to be a franchise, whether or not it was going to have sequels, and this is probably the first time that I feel very confident, and I think the studio does too, that we're going to get a sequel, I guess potentially in a uh, an Adam Wingard trilogy, if that's what you want to call it. <laughs> I mean, sure. I didn't never thought I'd say those words, but um, yeah, it seems like that's where we're going. In fact, let's hit an article here. We're going to take a look. It, it's this from The Hollywood Reporter, so you know it's real because it's, you know, it's a Hollywood rag. It says, uh, MonsterVerse future looks bright after Godzilla x Kong. The franchise is in a good position to continue the journey, says Legendary's Mary Parent. So I guess she's she's in charge of this thing. This just came out. I think this came out t- yesterday, whatever day we are on, and you're viewing this, folks. That's, that's when you get to hear it. Um, but... It's funny. They the article literally says Jaws dropped at Legendary and Warner Brothers when Godzilla X Kong: The New Empire opened to 80 million in North America over Easter weekend, despite getting shredded by critics. Again, no one cares about the critics. They're they're useless. Um, we all know that Rotten Tomatoes is is a fraud. 
it's just a good way to gauge where things sit. I, I don't put any salt in it. Uh, but she goes, this is certainly an exciting result. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks. Uh, we're in a good position to continue the journey, but let's see how Godzilla X Kong unfolds. These are the early days, but we certainly are feeling good. What do you think the end projection? Like, do you have a projection? Where do you think it's going to come in? So I'm I'm thinking and hoping that by by the end of like marketing and merchandising that this movie will probably make around four hundred thousand to five hundred thousand uh four hundred yeah five hundred mil hmm. millions say that. five hundred yeah five hundred million dollars at the box office billions um, <laughs> honestly we can do. Billion. Billion. <laughs> well, by day ten, um, the global cum is at three hundred and sixty-one million, and this was right. the cheapest. Was it the? Ch I think it had the lowest budget of it all the monsterverse. I think it's like one hundred and thirty-seven million that this one made, uh, or or this one cost to make. Yeah. So yeah, definitely the cheapest within the monsterverse. Not to mention the reason why that they're trying to lean more towards Kong is most likely because of the licensing and things. I was honestly surprised to even see Mothra make a return in this film because, I mean, I knew she had a role in it, but I didn't expect it to be as heavy as a role as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was just going to be a simple one-time thing, and that was going to be it. Yeah. I also I also liked, you know, speaking of spoilers for Godzilla X Kong, I like the idea that the little girl kind of mimicked the two women who communicate with Mothra. There was like a little bit of a mm. kind of an the Easter egg the, there. The telepathy sisters or something. Yeah, I forget what they're called. But, you know, the ones that, you know, sing the Mothra, you know. Oh, that's the only thing I hate about the Monster vs. Direction. That's one thing I respect about um, Michael Doherty is the music. God, the music track just hit on so many levels for uh, fans of the Godzilla franchise. Yeah. So I'm not a huge fan of the music direction that they're going uh, through now, but I mean, I'm definitely not hating it either. Yeah, it didn't like stand out to me, but it also didn't seemingly get in the way, and it's by no means as epic as a lot of the original Godzilla stuff. Even in Shin Godzilla, they were able to incorporate some of that stuff. So yeah. Um, I don't know. I think they you, they did a lot of it too in in Godzilla minus one, so yeah. I you know the monster verse is like its own thing, and I just think it's it's fun. That's and that's all I'm looking for is fun. You know what I mean? I don't need to be like you know what I mean. As critics, I I just sometimes I like to be able to park my brain at the door, and it's okay. You know, using a little tiny monkey as a bat is perfectly acceptable for me on some, you know <laughs> what I mean? Or uh, yeah. as, uh, you know, my uh, co-host said, he said that Godzilla could have qualified for the NFL Combine, which was kind of weird. <laughs> Godzilla was like leaping off of things and, and sprinting like it was crazy. Bro, uh, the Undertaker better watch out, man. That was one thing I was a little, you know, because I'm a giant Pacific Rim fan. Well, at least the... The, the, the del toro movie uh and the weight of everything seemed real impressive whereas monster verse is starting to get into this like weird they're little floaty you know what i mean like i don't feel like yeah. a lot of the gravity affects them anymore but you know again i'm willing to to check it at the door but i wish it had a little bit more of that like weight to it if yeah you, and yeah. that's that's what i was saying in my reviews it's like there was the complete opposite transition when it was from the humans and then it focused on kong in the hollow earth it felt like kong wasn't as big as he was in the hollow earth than he was on um on on the surface world there's a lot so with of the humans, weird stuff there too we could get oh into. yeah so when the humans, they're like walking in this forest and the trees are their height. However, when Kong's walking, it's all the way up to his like his elbow or something like that. Like some of those trees are huge and then some of them are small. It's just like you can definitely tell like in the recording of it, it just looked like two different lands that they were filming in um, as opposed to when they were on the surface. When when Godzilla was like, yeah, jumping off the rocks and things like that, that was a nice throwback to the Showa era. But I think I think I agree with you on that. Where it's just like if you want giant action, 
you can attest this to uh, eras like in the Heisei or even in Final Wars, honestly, yeah. where it's, there was still gravity. There was still like camera shaking. And I think where Godzilla versus Kong succeeded is, is you got those shots. And when those shots were like inside buildings, you saw the chairs moving and things like that. Like you felt the gravity of the situation when it was inside those like little land shots where it's like viewing as a human. But in Godzilla X Kong, I didn't. I definitely didn't feel that same kind of gravity in there, but it was still fun action to watch. I just wish, honestly, it was a little longer. I felt like the buildup to that NF fight scene just kind of felt very, very uh, fast paced for something that should have been, I think, a real gradual thing. But I tell you, Godzilla didn't hold back. No, <laughs> Godzilla no. wasn't holding back any punches on that one. I he was he was respected I a lot. Feels like Godzilla's going like full speed the entire time. Uh, that was the one weird thing. Like, I couldn't really get an idea of how big Shimo was. Like, it was real weird to me. Like, sometimes, you know, like, uh, Scar King is riding him, but Kong's pretty tall. He's, like, a lot taller than the Scar King. And then she was fighting Godzilla, and I was pretty, I, like, I just, like I said, the size thing kept, like, changing on me. And I was, like, I couldn't get a real idea of scale. So, hopefully they they get a better idea of how they're going to do that but you know whatever again i i enjoyed it 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 was it was uh the only thing i i think i also said was there weren't as many epic um scenes like like i always go back to the rodan scene in king of the monsters and that was just it was so like intense and epic of, of rodan emerging from the volcano and we just yeah, don't you could definitely get, tell that there was love and passion in that. We I just don't feel like when I think back on on, on either Kong versus Godzilla or Kong, at, you know, uh, Godzilla X Kong. I just don't. There's not gonna be a lot I remember other than maybe the the baby monkey bat. <laughs> other than that, there's there's not <laughs> that a lot was of. So bad. I don't even know what that was about, but it was funny. I laughed, so there's that. Uh, so it's a, that's that's what's a little weird about it, but hey, you know, like I said, it, it, it's just for fun. And speaking of that, why don't we move to Adam Wingard, where he thinks he can take the movies. He wants to keep going. He hopes there's a demand. Um, we know it's profitable. It's already made enough to make back its budget. So now it seems like everything else is just going to be gravy for them. So I don't see any reason why they won't do that. You know, will it beat the rest of the other movies? That's tough to uh, to see. They think it's gonna make maybe five hundred million, but I think it's gonna make more than that. It's already too close to that. If it runs for three more weeks, I, I can't imagine it not doing more than that. Um, but he says he's got ideas. Adam Wingard, if we keep Adam Wingard, which I mean, I guess I'm okay with. I, I don't know how I feel about Adam Wingard. Like he's okay. I'm not going to run out and see his next movie. Speaking of which, whatever happened to the guy who directed uh, Kong Skull Island? That guy was supposed to do a Metal Gear movie, and he's just like falling off the face of the earth. And Kong Skull Island <laughs> made money, so what happened to that guy? I don't even remember his name, but I, I seem to like him as a director. I thought he was pretty, you know, there was some iconic stuff in Kong. You know, Kong standing out in front of the sunset, the millions of helicopters, <laughs> like... I, so I'm curious, like, maybe they can give somebody else a chance at this. But, I mean, I don't know. How do you feel about it? So when I was younger and Kong Skull Island released, that was the only Monster Verse, Verse movie that I didn't go see in theater. Only because, as a kid, at the age of, what, what was it when it came out? 2017? 2017 or something like that? Or 2015? Um, but I wasn't huge into Kong because all I saw was Gorilla. Yeah, I mean, if you were to really tell a kid which one would you like more, a gorilla or an atomic breathing lizard, nine times out of ten they're going to go with an atomic breathing lizard because there's some there's some form of power within just saying those words. Yes. So it wasn't until um, 2018 when it was released to HBO Max that I actually got to watch it, and when I was watching it, I, I felt like it was mainly the uh, the names of the actors. That really carried the movie at the beginning. I mean, you had you had big names, uh, Samuel Jackson. Uh, you had um, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, the Loki Hiddleston. actor, Tom Hiddleston. Hidd yeah, Tom Hiddleston, um, the guy who did uh, Sullivan and and um, 
I, I'm not good with names. Do you even have Captain but, Marvel herself is in there? Brie yeah, Larson. and then Brie Larson was in there. And I mean, we John had a C. lot Riley. of big names. And, and that, that I think, carried the film in terms of advertisement-wise. Um, but then when I when I went to rewatch the MonsterVerse with my girlfriend when we when we were when we were trying to introduce her to the kaiju world of things, Kong had uh, Kong Skull Island has a, a better story than I gave it credit for at the beginning. Like the characters are solid, the theme, the setting was on point for for everything. Like the music track was good. I I rate. Uh, I rate Kong Skull Island better than Godzilla 2014, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, mainly just because the vibrant colors also was really hitting, and the skull crawlers actually had a very compelling story to them, um, and made them like an actual threat towards Kong. Um, but in terms of the director himself, I don't remember him. I don't remember his name, honestly. I don't remember what other films he's even done uh, past Kong Skull Island. Um, Not a lot. I didn't even know. I didn't even know there was going to be a Metal Gear movie in general. My father is a huge fan of it. He was trying but, um, to get um, who was he trying to cast for it? Uh, the guy he's in Dune, he's in Ex Machina. Uh, Poe Dameron, what I forget that actor's name off the top of my head, but do you know who I'm talking about? The actor. yeah, but you're right. I don't know the name either. <laughs> uh, Oscar Oscar Isaac. Yeah, I think that's his name. Oscar Isaac. He uh, he was going to cast him as. Uh, a snake, which I thought was a pretty cool casting, and they greenlit it, and then something happened, and I don't know, you know how Holly, well, we don't really know how Hollywood is, but sometimes people just fall <laughs> out of favor. Uh, but yeah. so let's talk about Wingard. Then he has ideas. His ideas are for Baby Godzilla and Destroya in his next MonsterVerse sequel. That's pretty ambitious. I don't know how many how many people even know what Destroya is. Uh, which I don't oh think you gosh. need to, because like, what was? Who cares about Tiamat? Like, I, that's that's a completely new creation. So I think that that's kind of an interesting story. I would like it to go back to Godzilla. Let Kong sit inside of Hollow Earth and let's go Godzilla. So I don't know. Well, you know what they're gonna do. You know what they're gonna do, right? Uh, have uh, baby Godzilla get kidnapped? I don't know. What do you think? No, it's gonna be a send off. It's going to be a, such a send off, and I know it because if you go back to the contract that Toho and Legendary had at the very beginning of the thing, one of the things that it says is is you cannot kill Godzilla unless he has a child or offspring that can replace him for future products. Oh, okay, uh, or, or for future uh, projects. Um, so when Adam Wingard brought up the idea of Baby Godzilla, and not only that, but Destroya, I knew exactly what was going to happen. Um, in the 19, I think it's 1985 film, Godzilla vs. Destroya, it was going to be a send-off for Godzilla in the Toho st- uh, series. Yeah. And what ended up happening is he was going on a meltdown because he had consumed too much radiation. What did Godzilla do in Godzilla X Kong? Consumed a lot of radiation. Yeah. And I'm thinking that that's exactly what's going to happen, is it's going to be a showdown between Godzilla and his most deadly rival, Destroya. And it's probably going to be a send off for the G Man for Kong to continue the MonsterVerse, which honestly, to be fair, they should because Godzilla receives his love from Toho almost all the time, and it's not like the G- the Godzilla fandom is just going to die just because the MonsterVerse legend uh, version of Godzilla goes away. No, I think what it needs to be is I think Godzilla should make an exit in the MonsterVerse and let Kong now go off with these Titans that are now created with Michael Doherty. Yeah. And um let let Kong finally build a reputation for himself because we have to remember if it wasn't from Kong in the very get-go, Godzilla wouldn't really be around because Kong is what inspired Toho to even make Godzilla. So we have to give we have to give some credit or some respect to a character who has had so many attempts at a franchise but never really succeeded. This is finally its their opportunity to take Kong and make something of himself. Um, and let Toho continue with Godzilla through minus one, because I think uh, if the cards are played out right, I think Toho is is about to get back into the arena with the whole monsters duking at it with each other, because in the director from minus one did say, if Godzilla is to appear next time, he's definitely going to show up with somebody else. Oh, and honestly, I think that love needs to go to Anguirus. 
I mean, that, that I think that's a kaiju that doesn't receive as much credit as it needs. Godzilla um, raids again. Yeah, honestly. Like if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for that one and Godzilla versus Kong, the Godzilla fan base wouldn't be what it is today. So there's got to be some form of uh, way that we need to pay those movies homage or something like that. That would be very interesting. I also I, I had something that I heard in the movie that made me think twice, and I, I I know I'm not the only person to think this. Uh, but he said they mentioned the. Uh, what do they say? The is it the Titan that ate a star, and they immediately assumed it was Godzilla. And I was thinking maybe they're referring to Space Godzilla because I think that would be you know because you have you have two parallels there. You could either go with Destroyo, which is really man made, and you know man trying to take back uh, some sort of power from Godzilla, or you can do the opposite where you have his like space threat because they already hinted that Ga uh, that Ghidorah was from space. You could easily introduce either Gigan or Space Godzilla. Throw them both out there. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever you want. Bring them in. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Honestly, the only, yeah. The only trick is the, it, is the licensing component. But I thought hmm. there was a possibility that they were... I think they left it open to interpretation where you could consider... You know, I guess you could say like that Godzilla ate a star, I guess, but I could also go the space Godzilla way. Here's how I um I pictured it um when when it got to the element of thing. Upon watching the movie, I thought the humans had said that Godzilla was the one who ate a star. No, but I'm well, glad they that, that, said, that was in uh that was the lady interpreting it. She was reading hmm. the prophecy. And then when she said there was a Titan that ate a star, they said the other people were like, oh, they're talking about Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. But I, if I recall, like, uh, I don't remember the first one that well, but like, I don't, I think there's been many Godzillas since the Godzilla that we have now. Yeah. And then that's not the same Godzilla from their original fight with the Scar King. Like maybe it is, oh, yeah. maybe it's not. But it's, you're also trying to interpret what some like tribe said, you know. And I don't know how fluent she is in that. And I don't know that they were going to correct her one way or the other, you know. <laughs> they, you yeah. know, there's such a little they, component, you know what I mean? They're like, yeah, look, yeah. Yeah, read this stuff, and it'll be fine. Yeah, and then they definitely, um, they definitely have a direction now that now that they introduce a concept and a story that introduced spaces godzilla and what we were thinking uh me and my father he brought up a cool idea uh the other night where he where he said what they can do is they can take space godzilla now that he's all powerful and he and he's proclaimed himself as the king and ruler of this world so what is he going to do with all that power he's going to go out and conquer other worlds and then he goes to this world conquers it and to the other worlds and conquer it and then he's finally like all right i think i've conquered enough time to come back home and that's where the challenge ensues of godzilla going up against space godzilla and maybe we can throw in king kong there because you know godzilla had a uh, mogira in, in the original godzilla versus space godzilla so have them take him out and then what we decided that ended up happening is that the alien races that got conquered want revenge and so they send a champion to go kill space godzilla but when they get to the planet they notice Godzilla instead. And so the 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 aliens are like same DNA uh, traces found within that Godzilla that was in that Godzilla or even physical features. And so the alien creatures are now attacking Godzilla in attempts to avenge a people that doesn't realize that they're killing their Avenger. And and, and I think it would it would definitely be the opening door to like introducing alien races and things like that is letting them come to Earth with a vengeance and a desire to kill Godzilla, thinking that he's space Godzilla instead. Yeah, I feel like there is room to go that whole. I mean, it's so it, you know what I mean. I, I think I read a review that was like, "Oh, what's the uh, you know the plausibilities left the left the window?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that left like in the." first movie because we don't have giant <laughs> monsters walking around so you know what i mean that's not like a thing yeah. i'm also kind of hoping in the future that maybe we could get mechanic kong that's one of my favorite movies of uh of all the kaiju movies like i'm not a giant king kong movie much like your or mo i'm not much of a king kong guy myself 
like I can appreciate King Kong, but I think one of the best uh, kaiju movies ever made is the is the Mechanic Kong one. Um, I have it on DVD and I cannot remember the name of it. Off the t- have you ever it's seen like, that? I think one? it's like I want to say it's Son of Kong or something like that because it's supposed to be um, Kong. Because I, I I know the movie itself, I haven't actually ever watched it before. But the abilities of Mechanic Kong were really um, really a threat to King Kong because the whole idea is Mechanic Kong was made to mess with Kong's mind. Oh, it's King Kong um, Escapes. And- That's what it is. King Kong Escapes. That's right. I highly recommend like that the... one. That one's probably like one of my favorite kaiju movies of all time because it's got a lot of uh, different stuff going on, and uh, it's kind of nonstop action. It's it's got an interesting plot because it's it's kind of all over the place, but it, it was yeah. it's just wacky enough to fit in this this whole thing. But maybe that's not the next sequel, like you said. Maybe we're gonna see Godzilla get sent off, and then maybe Kong keeps it going. I mean, with the amount of money that I think this is gonna make. I could see like another one or two sequels coming out of it, um, just based on what we have currently. But what I would yeah. like to do is uh, maybe wrap this up and let the audience let us know what would you like to see. What kind of different kaiju would you like to see in one of these movies that clearly are open to bringing in stuff? Do you want to see them make something completely new, or do you want to see some of the old goodies, some of the old baddies, bring ba- bring them back in? Should we see some Angoras? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, be sure to subscribe, not only to this channel, uh, but also to Gigablast02. That's also a YouTube channel. I will link that right up here. You're going to be able to see the channel, and you're going to subscribe. I'm telling you. You got to go there. <laughs> Uh, but if you'd like to see more of this, also let that let us know down in the comments below. We'd like to get this going, and we'll talk more than just Godzilla talk. Uh, we might talk some other things, too, some pop culture, news reviews. You know this thing that we do here. So anything you'd like to leave the fans with there, Giga? Remember, that's just a kaiju movie. That's that, right. That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe. We love all y'all, but we are on to the next one.